Hi friends, uh, in today's video I want to talk about the 10 apps that make this iPad right here, the iPad Pro, or at least my iPad Pro, my favorite tools, or at least, son of a bitch. Today I want to talk about the top 10 apps that make the iPad Pro, this bad boy right here, one, oh, Jesus. One of my favorite tools to use in my day-to-day -day life. So I want to start with uh, actually one of the main reasons that I even bought this thing, you know. It was to take notes at university. I mean, obviously I didn't buy an iPad Pro necessarily for this, but an iPad in general, I wanted to, again, want to be able to combine, you know, the, you know, um, advantages of taking notes on my laptop and the straightforwardness of just writing things down, you know. So to me, that was kind of the reasons that I, the reason that I wanted to buy the iPad, and of course, you know, uh, its trusty companion right here, the Apple Pencil. That's why one of the first apps that I'm going to be talking about today is Notability. Uh, Notability is a note-taking app for the iPad. Uh, it's mostly for handwriting, but you can also type whatever you want. It lets you jot down whatever you want. There's uh, you can uh, uh, categorize um, your notes by subject and uh, different dividers. It has a bunch of features that you know made me choose it. But the most important one is how it felt. Buying an app just because of how it looks and feels is a bit of a. It doesn't let's say that it doesn't necessarily sound like the best reason to invest in something. But I believe in uh, uh, enjoying, truly enjoying the product that you use, the service that you use. So I, I think when it comes to note-taking apps, you don't necessarily have to use Notability. There's free ones like OneNote, for example, well, or well, I guess now Notability as well. Or there's uh, GoodNotes, you know, and there's a lot more really that you can use. Uh, Evernote, I believe, supports Apple Pencil uh, as well, you know, just writing stuff. The great thing about having a digital note-taking app is that you can ask, access the notes on multiple devices. You know, like I installed, for example, my uh, M1 Pro MacBook. Uh, I installed the what is it called? What is it? A Notability app, so I can just open them up there whenever I can write something here in a, in a couple of seconds or even milliseconds, depending. You know. Um, all the new information appears on my laptop, which is great. And of course, another nice thing about a digital notebook is that it never ends, basically. You know, I mean, of course, it's not infinite, but it's so, I think I should have just stopped talking there, you know. And speaking of writing down things digitally, uh, my favorite journaling app, I used to use Alan Mind um, to journal every morning. I switched actually like about a month ago or two, I think early December or something. I switched to day one. Element is a great app. You know, it looks, it's really pretty, you know, to put it lightly. And it has a bunch of great features with a whole, you know, um, articles and stuff about, you know, a good lifestyle and, um, you know, different tips for improving your life, etc., etc. But day one is just cleaner. It just is, you know, it's just really no better way to say it for me. I didn't need all of those features, so I, I decided to opt for a cleaner, uh, more straightforward. Uh, of course, you know the the journaling app that you use, uh, even more is an is a very intimate choice, even more so than the than the what do you call it, the note taking app. So I'm a you know. I have, a, I have an actual, uh, I have a video on journaling if you want to check it out. I speak more on this whole, even the app thing. Um, my third app on this list is Calm. Calm is a meditation app. I know I uh, talked about it more in my meditation video. If you want to check that out, you can check it out here or here. Here, I think. Anyways, the I thing, whatever. Calm is a beautiful app. One of the best things about it is I can, because it's, uh, the iPad has such a beautiful screen and amazing speakers, which I can't really, doesn't really translate through, through video. But if I just turn it on like this and leave the, this sort of landscape with some audio on it, it helps me concentrate. I just kind of like put it next to my setup or uh, at the back of my head <clears throat> if I'm trying to fall asleep or something. So I'll just open Calm uh, and I'll put it here over near my head, you know? Because it, you know, it helps me with sleep. Of course, I need to, to, 
So you can increase the volume. It, it really is about the speakers here, honestly. The immediate speakers really make it a pleasant experience to meditate with it, with it you know? <laughs> This next app is truly one of my favorite apps out there for the iPad, any iPad, really. Playgrounds is amazing. It's a app to learn how to code. So this is what it looks like. It's basically a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of tutorials. You can actually, you know, make apps using this app. I think, anyway, I'm pretty sure, I don't know. It really can take you from a, you know, beginner, basically noob at coding to an absolute beast. And um, if you have an iPad, I recommend to anyone out there, no matter what field you're in, what age you are, to download this. Unless you're like a pro at coding, maybe you don't need it, you know. But otherwise, I mean, let's be real. You know, coding is probably one of the one of those skills that can only prove a CV. There's no way somebody sees, you know, I can code in Swift on your CV and says, yeah, I don't, I don't like this. You know, you're fired or something. Just download it. Okay. Speaking of learning new things, musician is another app for my iPad. It's actually to learn music. You don't even have to, it's not like exclusively on the iPad or even on iOS slash iPad OS or Apple or just portable devices. It's, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's available in, even like in browser mode so you can um, access it literally anywhere. But with the iPad, you know, you can put it whenever you, whatever you want. That's what she said. <laughs> It's really the flexibility of the positioning of the iPad, I guess, that made me choose this app and put it on this list. Speaking of learning stuff again, Memrise. Memrise is a language learning app that you might not be familiar with. At least I wasn't until it was recommended to me by the App Store. I prefer this app because of one simple thing. When you learn something here, let me try and... Yeah. Yeah. Dude, show me a freaking video. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I wasn't able to find what I was looking for. But basically, uh, it has two features that I didn't see in Duolingo. First of all, speech recognition. That's number one. And two, it teaches you languages by showing you clips of actual native speakers. The list of languages that you can learn is not as big as Duolingo. Big surprise, Duolingo is pretty insane. And also, one other thing that makes it one of my favorite apps for the iPad, in my case, is the same thing for you as for a musician, you know? It's the flexibility of it, you know? Uh, it's a, And it's a large screen at the same time. You understand what I'm saying? Memorize good, good, uh, same as musician. Very good app, okay? Good. If you've ever watched a video on the iPad Pro, there's a very large chance Large chance, big chance, big chance, I think. Uh, there's a very good chance that you've heard of the app LumaFusion. And for a good reason, because honestly, it's, I, I got it on like the first day that I, got, that I got this iPad, probably not the best decision. Could have probably just used iMovie and been okay with it. It looks really professional, so it felt good to use it. You know what I mean? I definitely recommend that you don't start off with Lum editing LumaFusion if you're gonna edit your videos on an iPad, even though personally, I recommend, you know, if you're at home and you can, just edit it on, uh, on an actual laptop, on a computer. Because uh, while LumaFusion is nice, and in terms of mobile editing, it's probably the best thing out there. It's just not the same experience as actually editing on a desktop, um, you know, PC or a laptop at the same time, you know. It's just not the same thing with, you know, having a trackpad, a bigger screen, you know. Actually, that's kind of the whole thing. Just trackpad and bigger screen because you can have a, um, a keyboard. Even with the Magic Keyboard, the iPad is just not the same thing. Although, again, LumaFusion, top notch. Definitely do recommend it. I've edited my videos up until November on uh, the iPad through LumaFusion. Right with this app is the next one, which is Procreate. This is similar to LumaFusion again, you know, Probably one of the best creative apps on the iPad. Probably the best, it's kind of the Photoshop alternative for the iPad. I mean, though Photoshop is on the iPad, it's just not, I think, as well. It doesn't, Procreate doesn't have as many features, but the ones that it does have are better optimized for the iPad than Photoshop. For me, this app is mostly fun. 
for fun because I just love drawing. And sometimes I do use it for editing, but not that much because, again, I don't really have the skill set necessary for it. Most people probably don't need it unless you're like a professional, but it's pretty cool. Speaking of, I really don't know how to do these transitions. Speaking on of uh, graphical apps on the iPad, Comba. One of the best things about it is its availability on basically every platform I'm there. You know, I can just take a photo with my phone, upload it to Canva, then open it in um, iPad on my iPad and just do something. And I can, if I really want to, I can draw something, procreate, upload it uh, to Canva, and then open it on my desktop and edit there, and then download it on my desktop and put it into my video. It's really just like the flexibility of it. I'm not even sure I'm using the word correctly, but Canva, top notch. Last place, the entertainment apps. One of the most important thing about every single app on this list of mine is that it takes advantage of one of the iPad's features. Either the fact that you can, uh, that it's a very mobile device or it's a beautiful screen, the amazing speakers, etc, etc. The entertainment apps really do take advantage of a lot of this, right? I usually use my iPad with, with uh, headphones on, but when I don't, I like to put it on in the middle of my room and sometimes just blast some music, music through Spotify, put on a YouTube video when I'm, while I'm doing the dishes. Books get smart. And another good feature that I talked about in the six months uh, um, iPad review thing is the picture in picture thing. I'm watching something while scrolling social media. It is a very, very, very nice way to procrastinate like I'm doing most of the time. If that's not a reason to buy the iPad, I don't know what is, you know? Yeah, that's about it, you know? I just really think of the iPad as a mini entertainment system, right? That you can take everywhere with you. It's one of the things I love, it's actually not one of, probably the thing I love most about it. That's it for my list of top apps. If you have some suggestions, uh, put them down in the comments, write them down in the comments. Oh my God, yeah. Be sure to uh, watch this video on my six month review of the iPad. And um, this is the fun one. This is the MacBook, MacBook video that I really enjoyed making. Well, it was an unboxing, so you can understand. Uh, so, uh, yeah. See ya.